everybody. Pam from Around the Table Yarns here. Um, this is the second class for our Amagurumi Club that's covering July, August, and September. Um, we have been making, when we started, Walter T. Rex. It is a adorable paid pattern um, by Sarah Prather of Sarah D. Crochet. And this is all in the video notes as well. Um, last week, I'm sorry, last month, we covered um, how to do the cute little feet and hands and how to do the shaping for the leg. And um, that we're working in continuous a uh, continuous spiral. Um, this week, this is gonna be a very short class, um, because there was a lot of crocheting to do. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the head and the body. Uh, next month, our final month, we're gonna talk about the, um, the things that really make Walter special, which are the details. So the things like his cheeks, his nostrils, his spine down the back, um, how to really stuff him to get the full, um, the full effect. So, Today, we're just going to talk to you a little bit about how to change colors because his uh, his little striped t-shirt is built in. And uh, I'll also talk to you about a little bit different shape for us, which is um, this: the head shape starts more as a square and then works into more of a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my camera and we'll get started. Okay. So here we have, let me make this bigger. There we go. Okay. So here I'm going to start with his head. So um, I've been working on his little head. Big head, I should say. The big blocky head. So here's where you start. And that is actually... Um, here, the front, um, the front of his face. So it starts this way and then gets more narrow towards the back. All right. So in your directions, move that out of the way. It's going to have you start again with our magic ring. And then it's going to give a direction that I don't think we've seen yet in a pattern, which is to do, um, typically when we've done an increase, we've done uh, two into one space. This particular one has you do three into one space to create corners. So you can see my my diagonal lines going out from the center. Those are my corners I made by putting three single crochets into the same stitch, single crocheting across, doing more three, uh, doing three single crochets again, and repeating around. So it starts out as this square shape. And then uh, when you quit doing the increases um, and just do single crochets all the way around, then it builds up and you start to build your sides here. Um, this, let me move my marker. Here is my beginning of round marker. And um, eventually we worked up here a little bit, you can start to see um, some decreases start to happen. So it's starting to narrow, narrow it down towards the back. So I'll have a square shape front, which I think is adorable and kind of a unique design. And then the back of his head will be more rounded. Uh, one of the things that she talks about in this pattern is, um, where your beginning of round marker is, is where all of your decreases are gonna happen. Sometimes they're at the beginning of the row and sometimes they're at the end of the row and sometimes they're on both. Um, but where all the decrease happens is gonna be the bottom of his, uh, of his head. So this will be the under part. Here's where the top will be. Um, I've marked, she talks about where to put the eyes. Um, so I've marked my spots where the eyes are gonna be. Um, and I'll, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the eyes. You don't have to do them until you're a little further along if you don't want to. Um, but if you're using safety eyes, which is what I'm going to be using, you got to be able to get in there 
And um, eventually this is going to narrow down to where it might be uncomfortable to try to fit your fingers in there. Okay. So uh, she notes in the pattern that the eyes are 14 stitches apart. And since I know that this is the back here, all I did is I counted. Oh, and between rows, I'm sorry, 21 and 22. So I have just completed row 23 here. So I counted back to 22. And then in the space between 22 and 21 is where I'm going to be placing the safety eyes. The safety eyes are always going to go into kind of the hole in between the two rows. Okay. And um, how I figured it out was um, on row 23, which I just completed, um, I had 44 stitches. So I counted back and found my halfway spot. So 22 stitches around is here. And then I, they need to be 14 stitches apart. So seven this way and seven this way. And then I counted down two rows. So I recommend marking your eyes soon after so you don't have to count down a whole bunch of rows to try to figure out where they go um it was easier to do it before i got too far away from that space because in a when you're doing a continuous spiral you know they they start to go a direction and sometimes it's a little harder to count rows at least for me it is okay um so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna put my safety eyes in i believe the pattern calls for a 12 meter millimeter I happen to be out of 12 millimeters, so I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter, but I do feel like I'm crocheting fairly tight on this. Um, so I think the 10, 10 millimeter is gonna be just fine. Okay, so here's where I want my eye to go. Let's take, and I'm gonna poke it through. I'm not going to put the back on. Once the back is on, it is there to stay. I want to make sure I am happy with the placement before I put the backs on. So I think that's awfully cute. So again, from our, our picture, his eyes are set back pretty far as a T-Rex's are. So I'm actually coming, I'm decreasing and decreasing. So there's not gonna be a whole bunch more head happening here. I'm gonna be decreasing and creating the back. Um, right now, I like I said, I'm at 44 stitches and I will end up I will decrease down to six. So I am decreasing. I have about another 10 rounds to go. Um, so I'll be doing some fast decreasing here to close up the head. But if you wait till the end and you've only got an opening of six stitches, it will be hard to manipulate. So I recommend putting the, the eyes in now, okay? So I think I'm fairly happy with that placement. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the backs on. Worst comes to worst, you can, you know, get a little, you can cut these off. It's not easy. I mean, they're meant to be safety eyes. They're meant to not come off. All I'm doing is pushing, backing on. And it locks, I think you can see the grooves there. It locks into place and won't pull back the other direction. I'm do the same thing on this one. Okay, so my eyes are locked in. So she also talks about, uh, and one of the little details she says to do now is to do um, a little bit of embroidery above. We're gonna save that for next month as part of the details to put a little white. Um, and I'll be using the same color that I'm using my t-shirt right above the eyes just to embroider three little stitches. And I'm gonna do that when we're adding the details. 
Um, even though it's, she talks about doing it in this part of the pattern, I don't think it'll be a problem to do it after it's been stuffed because the other details we're gonna do then. Um, I'll use a finer needle. I think that'll be fine to be able to embroider the little white part on there later, okay? So that is the head. Um, just wanted to point out that it does start out as a square, which is a little bit different. And then once you stop those corner increases, then it becomes a shape that we're more familiar with. Um, but I just love the detail of that. If she could have done just a totally round face, but it's the details in this pattern that I just love. Okay, that's the head. The body starts with a magic ring and builds out um, with increasing uh, in a circle like we've, we've been doing. And then again, once you stop the increasing is when you start to get sides. And I've started decreasing too as well. But I wanna just do a little reminder um, or show you if you've not done this before, how to change colors without getting too much of a, um, a jog. There we go, in the, in the stripe, okay? So I went from the green, I went to the white, and I've gone to the blue. Um, this pattern just has one, it has two rounds of the white and then one round of the blue, and I'm about to switch back to the white. So here's my beginning of round marker. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm using a different camera this time and I really like it. Right. Me get back here. Okay. I have to work on my, adjusting my, uh, my lighting, so I apologize. See that? Okay, so I have one more stitch to do in the blue, and then I've got my beginning of round marker. So I'm gonna go in to make my single crochet, and instead of yarning over in my blue, pull out the white, Okay, look at that, the white got cut. <laughs> All right, well, we'll start white again. I didn't mean to cut it. I think I got, it got snagged in my bag. Um, you can just leave the colors hanging. I'm gonna leave my blue hanging, but I'm gonna yarn over in my white and do my last yarn over and pull through in my new color, okay? Which when you bring it over, will create the top of the next, stitch in the white. Now, I'm just gonna let those ends hang in there, pull out my beginning of round. And so here's the second part about getting a, a nice shift in color. Instead of doing a single crochet into my next stitch, I'm gonna do a slip stitch. So I'm gonna go into my stitch, grab my yarn and pull it all the way through. And just kind of tightening up my ends here. And the slip, and now that's still my first stitch, even though it's a slip stitch. So I'm gonna put a marker there, marking my first stitch of every round. And because it's a slip stitch, it doesn't have much height. So, at, and then the rest of my stitches are normal the tail let's not do the tail now I can do regular single crochet all the way around Work around this guy really quick. There are ways to get a, a completely invisible stripe. 
But this is going to be the back of our little body. And he's going to get a spine right down here, which is going to cover up that little jog for the most part. So I'm not too worried about it. It's a little fussier to get a completely um, jogless join is what they call it. And when you're joining, switching colors for rows. Um, but it's, it, it, you have to cut your yarn, you have to do a finishing stitch, and then you have to start again. And um, that was just uh, more than I wanted to do on this one. You certainly can do it. And there are lots and lots of different techniques. Um, YouTube is a wealth of information. Um, this is the one I liked the most. It gave a, you'll see as we come back around, a, an almost seamless join, which I thought was just fine. You can see by doing two rows of white and then one row of blue, you get that kind of cool textured stripe instead of a more solid stripe, which I kind of like. It's just another detail on this that I think just makes Walter all the more appealing. Okay, so I'm coming around here. And my next round, because I do two rounds of what, whoops, my next round is also white, so I don't have to change colors again. Out. And while I've stopped, I'm gonna just take a second because I have loose ends here. I'm just gonna tighten up. I'm gonna pull the end of my blue and the end of my white just to tighten up the stitches here a little bit. As I come back around. This and my next, take out my beginning of round. So this one was a slip stitch. So Really doesn't have much height at all. I'm going to go over my end at the same time. And we make a few more stitches. That was two. I remember where to put my marker. Three. Four. A little big loop to stop. So let me just pull my, tighten my ends up in here. All right, so let me zoom out so you can see. So you do get a little bit of a jog. Um, you get more of a jog here because we're going from two rows to one row. If we had done another roll of blue, I don't think it would have shown up as much. You would get more of kind of the seamless look like we get from the green to the white. And from the blue to the white, if you notice, there's hardly any join. But again, our little spine is going to go down the back of it. And I think it's going to cover up any um, anything we've got going on there. So I'm not too worried about it. So let me put my beginning of round marker back in. I had made four stitches. One, two, three. I need to go back and double check that I'm not supposed to be doing any decreasing here on the body. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was supposed to do a decrease. So I will take it back. I was supposed to do a decrease at the end of this first round of white. 
So I will remind you, I'll show you how to do our invisible decrease if you're not, if you don't remember. Put my beginning and my mark in here. Okay, so I'm gonna do an invisible decrease. So you need to do, you need two stitches because we're gonna decrease these last two stitches into one. So I'm gonna go into underneath the front loop of the first stitch and the front loop of the second stitch. My end will get out of the way. So I've only gone through the front loops of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull it through both of those front loops. And then finish your single crochet. And then I can make new first stitch of the round. I'm keeping track on my pattern by crossing off. So I changed that to okay. And then I would keep going. Um, and that's how you do the invisible decrease. Again, you go underneath the front loop and the front loop of the next. So I've, I've gone into two stitches there, yarn over, pull through, and then finish your single crochet. And it makes a nice invisible decrease. Okay. So I think that's all we wanted to cover today for Walter. Um, now it's just a matter of um, finishing your body parts. So um, we talked last time on the last video about his feet and hands and arms and legs. And now we've covered his body and his head uh, and putting in the safety eyes. And so finish all of those pieces. And then next month we will um, go over to the stuffing, seaming together and adding all of the details. So um, have your body parts ready and I will see you next month. Bye.